Hello, young Harding. You're early. Yes, I'd finished up. It was too late to start anything fresh. What's all this fuss about in the papers tonight, Mr. Cabell? Wars and rumors of wars. Crying wolf? Someday a wolf will come. These fools are capable of anything. In that case, what happens to medical research? It has to stop. That'll mess me up. Mess you up. Mess everything up. My God, if war gets loose again. Happy Christmas, everyone. While shepherds watch their flocks by night, all seated on the ground. What's the matter with you fellas? All that. <laughs> this little upset across the water doesn't mean anything. Threatened men live long and threatened wars never occur. <laughs> Another speech by him. But I tell you, there's nothing in it. It's just to buck people up about the air estimates. Now, why meet wars halfway? Why not look on the bright side of things? You're all right. Your business is going up. You've got a jolly wife, a pretty home. All's right with the world, eh? Mm. All's right with the world. Certainly. Are you sorry we had these children? No. Life must carry on. Why should we surrender life to the brutes and fools? I loved you. I wanted to serve you and, and make life happy for you. But think of the things that may happen to them. Were we selfish? You weren't afraid to bear them. We were children yesterday. We're anxious. But we're not afraid. Really. <laughs> And their way is approaching every town. Gas masks are being distributed. See that they fit tightly behind the ears. Get to cover. Get under cover at once. The enemy is not in any great force, but our anti aircraft gunners will speak the truth.
Bad shape, eh? Why does it come to this? God, why do we have to murder each other? Go, my friend. That is my guess. It's a bad guess. Funny if I'm... if I'm killed by my own poison. Quick, get this... <coughs> I've given plenty to others. Why should I not have some myself? Give it to her. I'm done. <coughs> Bring three of them out. in working order. Give me only five. I don't want them all. And we'll end this war of ours forever. I'll see you get your reward. Is your wife, Gordon? You keep her well hidden? There it is. You were right. A plane once more. Look, there he is. Look. He's shutting off. He's coming down. What's the meaning of this? They got airplanes before us. And you told me we couldn't fly anymore. While we've been fumbling, they've been active. Here's some of you, you and you. Find out who this is and what it means. There's only one man in it. Hold him. Somewhere they can still make new machines. I didn't dream it was still possible. Yes, but who is this man? How did he dare come here? Fetch him to the town hall. Guard his machine and bring him to me there. Come along, Mary. I must see that machine. in control of this part of the country? The chief. What we call the boss. Good. I want to see him. He sent me to arrest you. You can't do that. But I'll come and see him. Well, you're under arrest whether you'll admit it or not. The country's in a state of war. Well, come along. I know the way. I remember this place well. I used to live over there for years. Ever heard of a man named Partsworthy? Harding? Look, here he comes now. Yes, thank you. So you're Harding. I seem to remember something about you. You were a young man. You're John Cabell. want to see me about. Who are you? Do you know this country's at war? At war? Still at it, then. Eh? We must clean that up. What do you mean, we must clean it up? All war. Who are you, I say? The law. Law and sanity. I am the law here. I said law and sanity. Where do you come from? Who are you? Wings over the world. Well, you know you can't come into a country like this in this fashion? I'm here. Do you mind if I sit down? And now, for the fourth time, who are you? I tell you, wings over the world. That's nothing. What government do you under? Common sense. I belong to world communications. We just run ourselves. Eh? You run into trouble if you try and land here in wartime. What's the game? Order and trade. Trade, eh? 
Can you do anything in munitions? Not our line of business. Fuel, spare parts. We've got planes. We've got planes. I've got boys that have trained a bit on the ground. We've no fuel. It hampers us. We might do a deal. We might. I know where I can get some fuel. I've got my plans later, but if you can manage a temporary accommodation, we'd do business. World communications helps no one to make war. End war, end war. I want to make victorious peace. I seem to have heard that phrase before, when I was a young man. But it made no end of war. Now look here, Mr. Aviator. Let's see how we stand. Come down to actuality. The way you swagger, you don't seem to realize you're under arrest. You and your machine. You'll find other planes looking for me if I happen to be delayed. We'll deal with them later. Now you can start a trading agency here if you like. I have no objection. The first thing we shall want is to get our planes in the air again. Quite. A laudable ambition. But our new order has an objection to private aeroplanes. The impudence. I'm not talking about private aeroplanes. Our aeroplanes are public aeroplanes. This is an independent sovereign state at war. I know nothing about any old order. I'm the chief here, and I'm not taking any orders, old or new, from you. Now, was that wise? Wise? Yes, wise, to quarrel with him at once. Quarrel with him? Confound him, you began to quarrel with me. <laughs> you must clean that up. Clean that up! My wall. There's things behind him. Things behind him? Some sort of aerial bus driver standing up to me. Like an equal. So you lost your temper and you bullied him. I don't bully, I just handle the man. These are matters for us to talk about. Ah. This lady has been putting me through a severe cross-examination. But the gist of it is that away there in Basra, new aeroplanes are rising night and day, like hornets round a hornet's nest. What happens to me is a small affair. They'll finish you. The new world of United Airmen will finish you. Listen, you can almost hear them coming now. Not a bit of it. What he says is the truth. What he says is bluff. Make peace with the Amur and let him go. That means surrender of our sovereign independence. But more machines will be coming and more and more. Yeah, and he's here, hostage for their good behavior. Come, madam, enough of this little diplomatic mission of yours. You've got the subtlety of a bullfrog. <laughs> I don't know what she's been saying to you. I don't much care. There's no making peace between you and me. It's your world or mine, and it's going to be mine. Royal threats of swarms of hornets and so on. You're a hostage, remember that. Don't be too sure you win. Where do you come from? I come from the north. From every time. He says Cabal is a prisoner. They've got him, sir, and he's in danger. I had great difficulty in getting here. You say Cabal is in danger? In very great danger. The boss there is a violent tough. Hmm. Job for our new squadron. Well, now we've got a chance to try the new gas of peace on somebody. There's no time to lose, sir. May I report to headquarters? Yes. Take him to the council. At last, we have definite news. What is it? Gordon didn't fall into the sea. He got away. A fishing boat saw him making for the French coast. Perhaps he reached his pals. Well... Well, he'll be coming back. He'll be bringing the others with him. Curse these world communications. Curse all airmen and gasmen and machinemen. Why didn't we leave their machines and their sciences alone? I might have known. Why did I tamper with flying? Well, we needed aeroplanes against the hill state. Somebody else would have started in again with aeroplanes and gas and bombs if we hadn't. These people would have come interfering anyhow. Why was all this science ever allowed? Why was it ever let begin? Science is an enemy of everything that's natural in life. I dreamt of those fellows last night, great ugly black inhuman chaps. Oh, like machines, bombing and bombing. Yes, I guess they'll come bombing all right. Then we'll fight them. Since Gordon got away, I've had those air boys up to see me. They've got guts. They'll do something still. We'll fight them. We'll fight them. Ha! You've got hostages? And better didn't shoot them anyway. There's that chap Harding. Of course. He can't tell us what to do against this gas. If I had to put
pull his arm off and knock his teeth down his throat. Get him! Get him! I have to come to Earth sometime. What is this world communications? A handful of men like ourselves. They're not magic. I know nothing about gas. Tell us about these masks, anyway. Well, they're rotten. They're no good at all. What sort of gas have they got? I tell you, gas isn't my business. Well, they can't gas us when you're here, anyway. Here they are! Listen! It's coming already! Shut it up! We spared them now they've got us. 
my gas mask, but thanks to that, I'm here and everyone else is sleeping. I wonder if they'll ever use gas masks again. Sir! What is it? This man's not sleeping. He's dead. Dead in his world, dead with him, and a new world beginning. Poor old boss, he and his flags and his folly. And now for the rule of the air, and a new life for mankind. of a common order and a common knowledge. This is how I conceive our plan of operations. First, the roundup of brigands. That last dismal vestige of ancient predatory soldiers. The last would-be conquerors. Then settle, organize, advance. This zone, then that. And at last, wings over the world. And the new world begins. any better world than it used to be. I rebel against this progress. What has this progress, this world civilization done to us? Machines and marvels. They've built these great cities of theirs, yes. They've prolonged life, yes. They've conquered nature, they say, and made a great white world. Is it any jollier than the world used to be in the good old days, when life was short and hot and merry and the devil took the hindmost? All the same, what can we do about it? Rebel. Rebel now, now, now is the time. Why now in particular? Why, because of this space gun business. Because of this project to shoot human beings at the stars. People don't like it, shooting humans away into hard, frozen darkness. They're murmuring. They've murmured before and nothing came of it. Because they had no leader. But now, suppose someone cried, Halt! Stop this progress! Suppose I shouted to the world, make an end to this progress. I could talk, talk, 
Radio is everywhere. This modern world is full of voices. I'm a master craftsman. I have the right to talk. Yes, but will they listen to you? They'll listen, trust them. If I shout, arise, awake, stop this progress before it is too late. like that in the old days. Why? They'd no light inside their cities as we have, so they had to stick them up into the daylight, what there was of it. They'd no properly mixed and conditioned air. Everybody lived half out of doors. <coughs> they had windows of brittle glass. The age of windows lasted four centuries. They never seemed to realize that we could light the interiors of our houses with sunshine of our own, so there was no need to stick them up ever so high into the air. They keep on inventing new things now, don't they? And making life lovelier and lovelier. Lovelier, yes. And bolder. I suppose I'm an old man, my dear, but some of it seems like going too far. This space gun of theirs that they keep on shooting. What is this space gun, great-grandfather? Well, it's a gun that is charged by electricity. It's a lot of guns inside one another. And each one discharges the gun next inside. I don't properly understand it, but the cylinder it shoots out last goes swish right away from the earth. I wish I could fly around the moon. <laughs> well, that in time. Won't you come back to your history pictures again? I'm glad I didn't live in the old world. I know that John Cabal and his airmen tidied it all up. Did you see John Cabal, Great Granddad? Well, you can see him in your pictures. But you saw him when he lived. You really saw him? Yes. I saw the great John Cabell with my own eyes when I was a little boy. He was a lean, brown old man with hair as white as mine. He was the great-grandfather of our Oswald Cabell, the president of our council. I take it the space guns passed all its preliminary trials, and there's nothing left now but to choose the two who are to go. That's going to be the trouble. Thousands of young people have been applying, young men and young women. I never dreamt the moon was so attractive. Practically, the gun's perfect now. There are risks, but reasonable risks. And the position of the moon in the next three or four months gives us the best conditions for getting there. It's only the, the choice of the two now that matters. Well, there are going to be difficulties. That man, Theotokopoulos, is talking on the radio about it. He's a fantastic fellow. Yes, but he's making trouble. It's not going to be easy to choose these young people. With all these thousands offering themselves, we've looked into thousands of cases. We've rejected everyone of imperfect health, or anyone who had friends who objected. And the fact is, we want you to talk to two people. There's Raymond Parsworthy of General Frederick. You know him? Yes, I know him. And his son. We want you to see the son, Maurice Parsworthy. Why? He asks to go. We think you ought to see him. He's waiting here. Is Maurice Passworthy there? He's on his way. Good. You want to talk to me? Forgive me, sir. I came straight to you. You're asking a favor? A very big favor. I want to be one of the first two human beings to go around the moon. It means danger. Great hardship, anyhow. You realize there's an even chance of never coming back alive. A still greater chance of coming back a cripple. Give me credit for not minding that, sir. Yes, a lot of you young people don't mind that. But why should I give you a favor? Well, I'm, I'm the son of a friend of yours, and the people seem to feel you wouldn't to send someone you don't know, sir. Go on. We've talked about this over and over again. We? Yes, both of us. It's her idea even more than it's mine. Her idea? Who is she? Someone much closer to you than I am, sir. Go on. It's Catherine. Your daughter. She says you can't possibly send anybody's child but your own.
Well, I might have known. Today I'm going to put it to the world plainly. Is this thing to go on? Or are we sane and normal human beings to put an end to it? And an end to all such follies forever? this progress? What is the good of all this progress onward and onward? We demand a halt. We demand a rest. The object of life is happy living. We will not have human life sacrificed to experiment. Progress is not living. It should only be the preparation for living. They stage the old Greek tragedy again. And the father offers up his daughter to his evil gods. And that and voice is sounding to the whole world. No. The old slaveries have taken new no. names. They'll have to hear him and make what they can of him. What does this space gun portend? Make no mistake about it. The slaveries they put upon themselves today, they will impose tomorrow upon the whole world. Is man never to rest, never to be free? A time will come when you in your turn will be forced to wait to take your chance upon strange planets and in dreary, abominable places beyond the stars. An end to progress. Make an end to this progress now. Let this be the last day of the scientific age. Make the space come the symbol of all that drives us and destroy it now. <laughs> Grandson of John Gabal, the air dictator, the man who changed the whole course of the world. You, you've got experiment in your blood, you and your daughter. But I'm, I'm more normal. I don't believe my boy would have thought of it. The two of them must have got together. They'll come back together. This time, there's no attempt to land on the moon. But when, when is this great experiment to be made? How much longer have we got before they go? When the space gun is ready. Sometime this year, do you mean? Soon. Then, is there no way of saving our children from this madness? But would it be saving our children? Well, here they are. Father, where to go? Yes, you're to go. It's announced. Two hours ago. Your speech has struck fire. All the people are excited and angry. Some are already going out of the city towards the space gun. Nothing is wanted now but leading. We must go right on with this. To the space gun. And so we end an age. Young people, just beginning life. You want to go into that outer horror. Why don't you send somebody who's sick of life? They want fit young people, alert and quick. And we're fit young people. We can observe and come back and tell. Cabal, I just want to ask you one plain question. Why did you let your daughter dream of going on this mad moon journey? Because I love her. And I wanted to live to the best effect. Dragging out life to the last possible second is not living to the best effect. The nearer the phone, the sweeter the meat. The best of life, Passworthy, lies nearest to the edge of death. I'm a broken man. I don't know where honor lies. You haven't got things right, Passworthy. Our fathers and our fathers' fathers cleaned up the old order of things because it killed children. It killed those who were unprepared for death. Because it tormented people in vain. Because it outraged human pride and dignity. Because it was an ugly spectacle of waste. But that was only a beginning. There's nothing wrong in suffering if you suffer for a purpose. Our revolution didn't abolish danger or death. It simply made danger and death worthwhile. Come out. 